Hello to all my friends out there. Hi, you guys. Here we are again. So I, I efficiently made my own ice cubes. Getting them out of the thing. I don't edit my videos. I probably should. <laughs> Why should I? It's supposed to be like you guys are in the kitchen with me. This video is, can you do 10 things or 20 things at once and get anything done? Yeah, you can. I do it all the time. In fact, so at, when I'm home, I'm drinking uh, this cheap Shasta Cola. And I bought this, I think I bought it at 99 cent only for uh, $1. So I'm going to, I didn't buy ice cubes. I was, it's not that hot tonight. One thing, thank heavens. Uh, but the heat is not over. It will be back. So, you know, this way I can have some cold, well, you know, they call it a cold drink. Uh, actually, if it's cold enough, you know, it can be anything. It could be tea, anything. So doing 10 things at once. So, okay, so the AI is smart. And last night, you know, what I do is when I'm working at home, I, um, I watch videos on YouTube. That's when I watch all you guys' videos. And my AI is smart, and it fed me Tom Jones' I'll Never Fall in Love. Okay, I love Tom Jones. I love, love, love Tom Jones. And so what I will do is I will I will watch video after video. His videos are terrific if you haven't seen them. And it reminded me, one of the things I do is this life coach stuff. And so what they tell you how to do is like manage your life and stuff more efficiently. And, it, and he said, if you're in a bad mood or if you're depressed, go back to when you were young and listen to that music and you will get in a very good mood. And so I was uh, listening to Tom Jones while I was working and I was in a very good mood. Also, and I posted that on Twitter if you guys would like to access Tom Jones and why not. And there's a Steve Earle um, video that I, I posted on my Twitter that I love too and it reminds me of when I was young and, and it does put you in a really good mood but it also occurred to me if you play this this music you like then whatever work you're doing is not so bad okay so today I was walking two hours because I really didn't work and so what I like to do is stockpile a little bit each day because the little by little approach, I don't care what it is, saving money, doing your work. Uh, I was taking this, uh, some kind of science class, I think it was chemistry or something. And I said, this is too much work to get done. And so what I was doing is I was going over each and every little concept, making sure that I got it. And, and the teacher said, well, it's like clearing a forest. You can carefully clear each tree or you can clear it. So I thought, yeah, but if I if I don't if I don't learn this minor shit, then it's like shooting myself in the foot later on. So I just blasted through it and I caused myself all kinds of pain. So the stockpiling, the saving money, the being cheap, all these things are the same. You're still gonna have to do a massive amount of work. There's no shortcut. But if you just stay with it, my dad's favorite saying, just stay with it. So today I went to Walmart and I found the, um, the green uh, crispy fried onions um, that I need. But these are really good if you just put them on your salads. You know how uh, I mentioned the salad, it was lettuce, it was salsa, and it was um, Parmesan cheese. But some of these would be really good. So I got that because I'm stockpiling food for the holidays. Uh, there was mention that this will be the holiday like no other. And I thought, no, this will be the, the holiday like every other because I will make sure I have everything I possibly need. 
Okay, and then I bought uh, one can of Rotel tomatoes. And tonight, I will make some macaroni and cheese when I come back. And what is really good is Rotel tomatoes in your macaroni and cheese. Rotel tomatoes and Velveeta cheese taste very delicious. And then I bought one can of mushrooms. Um, mushrooms are good in your spaghetti, anything, even macaroni and cheese. But one of the things that's really good, uh, mushrooms, is if you want to make a stir fry, tomatoes, they can be fresh or canned. Uh, onions and mushrooms and then you know rice is really good so I bought that's all I pretty much bought but then what Walmart had marked down because I try to find everything marked down I got these two moisturizer for four dollars marked down uh, six dollars and twenty seven cents so that's how when you're on the lookout continuously for deals also, they had the ranch beans, so I got a can of those because uh, once in a while I like to have steaks, and I like steaks, ranch beans, and corn. But if, if you make hamburgers with jalapeno peppers and red onions, you know, uh, bake your jalapeno and remove the skin and the seeds and fry your... Um, your onions, red onions, and, and some oil, and then put the, the jalapeno in there and fry your steak, and then you put the vegetables on top with some baked potatoes and some corn, and some ranch beans, uh, and, and you can't always find this brand. So I got that at Walmart today for the stockpile. Okay, so the little by little uh, approach. So, you know, there's these these uh, YouTube followers. I'm fleeing California. Yeah, you're fleeing California to Nevada and living at, in California at the same time you're living in Nevada because you're doing business in Nevada and getting the... Yeah, right. So, fleeing California. Okay, over my lifetime, I have known quite a few women who came dragging back to town after fleeing to uh, Arizona. It's that uh, life is always greener on the other side. Sometimes it is, though. Uh, and if you really, literally can't afford California, it is a really good idea to flee. So now I want to talk to you about Christmas little by little. So I'm buying the food. I decided to use my old ornaments one more year. I might buy another Christmas tree. I don't know. So I was at the thrift store yesterday, and thrift stores are, you never know what you're going to find. So I bought this um, Bulova clock. Okay, so the point is, your Christmas is coming. Would somebody you know like this? Yeah, somebody I know would like this, me. <laughs> but it could be a Christmas gift. Then I bought this. Would somebody you know like this? Okay, you know, if your kids are lofty and they go, Mom, that is a used ladybug. You have to carefully explain to them, Children, it's a recession. <laughs> this is cute. It needs battery, I think. Then I bought, so you might be wondering, what's with the toys, Rhoda? Rhoda, well, my son's girlfriend is having a baby. And I am creating playhouses, very large playhouses, too. One at their house, one at my house. They might read Bell, but that's okay. We can keep the playhouse at my... Okay, then this is a very cute uh, barn. See, it's got a hayloft, and then you can... I, I had these when my son was a little kid, and you know how you have all the... We had every kind of animal because, you know, they have to learn the animals. But the thing about the barn, let's see if I can, uh, so the barn has a lot of space for the toys, how cute, look, for the horses, I, I, plus I'm trying to wear my son down on the pony thing, and he says no, because when I was a kid, I used to uh, watch Gone with Wind, and the little kid was killed, you know, riding the pony, which was sad, but hey. If you tame them, they're, some ponies are mean. Some ponies are kind of mean. Uh, also, you could sell these toys. I got them really cheap, $3.99.
what you could do is let your kids play with them and then get rid of them. And then I bought this, yes, for the playhouse to keep the toys in. Toy. My, my friend said, Ruthie, why don't you give some of your toys away? Because I used to keep my son's toys in refrigerator boxes. I go, oh, hell no. What happened to all these toys? My ex-husband had them, probably some of the friends. So in my toy box, what do I have? Oh, yeah, our, our playhouse is fun. This is one of my projects. Working on more than one thing at once. I bought, okay, the toy box was $4.99, but all this stuff was $3.99. And this is a cute little house. See how cute? And I will also be buying some tea sets. I do have a couple kids' tea sets. Look how cute. See, here's more furniture. Yes, and I will be buying all the Barbie stuff as well. So this is an example of preparing for Christmas. Now, I assume towards Christmas time there won't be as many toys. I could probably sell those at the, okay, I bought them for $4, but I, I like to double my money. So that means I would have to have $12 to double my money. And I'm not sure they're worth that. Uh, someone said that's not double, doubling your money, but I don't count the dollar I spend. I want two more dollars for my labors and all of that. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm preparing for Christmas little by little. Okay, now I want to talk to you guys a little bit about, oh, oh, and here's something I wanted to mention to the ladies. Okay, Dollar Tree has this uh, cotton yarn for one dollar. So I, I single crocheted uh, 30 stitches. And so what I'll make is a cute little dishcloth. This is going to be a cute gift. And so then I crochet around the edge with the alternate color and I make a loop. And these are really cute, uh, nice little gifts for Christmas. Because this is going to be the Christmas like every other. Uh, I think it is a mistake to let other people tell us what we're doing. Or they're not telling us what we're doing. We're doing what we're doing and we're listening to their suggestions, like wearing a mask. So out here people are a little sloppy about the uh, social distancing. I'm not sure. Uh, like uh, the second wave is coming. Okay, so now earning a little extra money. Part of earning a little extra money is knowing how to price your items. When I used to lit, work in one uh, low-end shops, this was a problem they had. They wanted to charge the same amount of money as a high-end shop, but the skill wasn't there. Okay, you might want to charge more for these watches, but what I like to do is I do the auction, and when I list these items, I want to sell these items. I don't want them sitting around in a store that I'm paying for. And eBay has been really, really good to me and gave me 200 free um, auction spots. So what I was trying to do is figure out what would be a price these items would sell for immediately. Because once I figure that out, then I get one of these watches. I know exactly what to list them for and how much they're going to sell for. So this is a guest watch. And they can go for like uh, $50. But these are this is a used watch. This is a new watch. This is Mark Echo. And I listed these two for $39. And the holiday is coming. And will probably sell more than likely. Now, when I, I went to the swap meet and I wanted to buy this watch, so uh, the guy said 50 bucks, and I said to myself, no. So I got about five watches, including this watch. Now, this watch has absolutely no value. I could probably sell it for maybe 10 bucks, but what the guy... I said, well, uh, let me look around. So I said, how much for all of these? And he said, well, how much would you pay? 
I think I had five watches. I go, 20? He goes, well, I have to make some money. How about 30? So um, I ended up getting five or about five watches for $30. And so the other watches were nice. I had one, a fossil chronograph and this watch. And uh, so that's how I figured the price out. Uh, that, you know, you what you don't want to really do too is go, well, what's everybody else doing? Well, who cares what everybody else is doing? What I'm doing is I am trying to figure out how I can post these watches and sell them. Because I, I don't want them taking up a space of my 200 spaces. I want that item to sell. Okay, so then the other thing I sell is costume jewelry, and I wanted to make mention. Okay, this is a handcrafted bracelet, and, and I broke it, and I have it held together by um, a safety pin. But see how it's like a little uh, rattlesnake uh, rattle uh, tail? It's very, very cute. I'm not selling that. And then this is um, an eye necklace now if you can find these are very very easy to sell i'm not sure why it doesn't matter um so this costume jewelry okay this stuff is this is walmart and these earrings and i i will wear them uh, i i bought them for a dollar i would sell them when i'm done with them for 25 cents and then i try to find all kinds of seashell stuff and i don't sell those because you know i, I like them Okay, now, so we're preparing for Christmas little by little. So let me talk to you about the 20 things I'm doing at once. And you might think, you cannot do 20 things at once. Yeah, you can. You just work on them little by little. Feng Shui. You've heard these claims of Feng Shui. And if you look at my apartment, you might go, Feng Shui, nothing. That's a damn hoarder's house. I'm working on it. It's a work in progress. So what you have to do is you have to get rid of everything broken, damaged, or soiled. Okay, I sell stuff. I don't want to get rid of anything I could sell. Like, it took me a while to price this. And what this is, is a really nice jewelry box. I have some rings in there. I sell the rings as well. I'll show you my rings. Some of them you have seen. But uh, the thing about costume jewelry, see the rings? Okay, so how did I determine the price? And this is nice. It has, it locks and it has, you know, a bunch of compartments and stuff. Well, how I finally decided, because this is a good uh, jewelry box. It's some kind of leather. Uh, I looked around and I saw at, um, at Walmart, they had jewelry boxes. In fact, you may remember I bought one marked down. And so this is a lot nicer. And their, I think their item was $29. So I priced this at $39. And that's as low as I'll go. Because I can always use jewelry boxes. So now, so far in the video, you have seen a lot of projects going on at once. Okay, the minimizing thing. Okay, I am I am watching videos on the minimizing. And so to compare and to contrast minimizing, I watch videos on hoarding as well. So we have the hoarders and the minimalists, right? Uh, both can be um, both can be kind of interesting. Okay. There are people who get intense satisfaction out of being very neat and clean and orderly. They like it. And some of them go into these hoarders' houses and clean them, and they're just so overjoyed when the um, environment is clean, they break down and they cry. Because, and I love, I love watching them, you know, almost throw up and stuff. And then we have the hoarders. And the hoarders are, are kind of smart. Like, okay, if you hoarded every paper, newspaper since you were born, you would have newspapers on JFK was shot. You would have newspapers when Saddam Hussein was taken down. And basically, these would be valuable, and the hoarders know it. There's also men that hoard, like, antique cars, and then, you know, they end up being... So, you know, you can't say, well, the minimalists are superior to the hoarders. Not really. 
but they're very interesting. So stockpiling, I stockpile food and it's an incredible amount of work. eBay and swap meet, Christmas and Thanksgiving, a thrifty living, you guys see that every day, car living. Okay, I did a bunch of videos on this and I was eating, <laughs> I was eating pizza in my car. I was eating um, cans of soup in my car, which is not good for your car. But I learned a lot, like park in the shade and how I could sleep in the back seat of my car, how I create a little home if I so desired. So the car living thing. Disaster preparedness and safety. This is a biggie. Uh, jewelry and collectibles and how to get blessings this is like one of the big big um, things of my life is how to get some you might go that is terrible you're not supposed to be trying to get blessings we're gonna go into that in a minute chess and also I am big into playhouses I try to find the videos I did if I knew my son was having a daughter, I thought he's a confirmed bachelor. Look at me, I most of my life I've never been married. So if I had known this, I would not have sold my playhouses, but I happen to actually be an expert at playhouses. And if I find my videos, I will show you guys. So now how to get blessings. Okay, so one of the things I decided to do was like I, okay, the little by little approach, I could give somebody this uh, salad and crackers who is really, really hungry one day. I could give somebody this can with a flip top of raviolis one day, and I would get probably get some blessings from God. And this is a nice big can of, of, um, of SpaghettiOs, and so I would try to get some blessings because you never know when you might need some. So you might go, well, Rhoda, that's off. Okay, let's talk about. Back to my diagrams, you guys. Okay, here's the little balance. And generally, the balances are equal. Here is a balance where you've done nothing. And uh, you have good or bad. Say you're bad, you know. So now to even this balance up here, you've got to go back with either blessings and this is a key concept, the curse shall not cling causeless. So good or bad. So when someone does something bad, like anything, they will, they will receive a consequence. If you do something good, you will receive a con consequence. Let me give you my list of things I'm working on. And I want to encourage you guys, if things are looking kind of bleak, say, okay, um, God, could you send some of those angels to help me, please? If you're sick, could you give me one of those healing leaves? Or could you please give me some of that anointing oil so my house stays nice and safe? And, uh, you know, pray to God for help. And then one of the best strategies you can take in securing that help is maybe a little um i prefer not to give people that i don't know like hand prepared food and in time what's it will occur to you that you are receiving some blessings my son's always going mom like what blessings and i go listen it's not all the bad all the good things that happen it's all the bad things that never happen okay you guys please like comment and subscribe and welcome to all the new followers get a notebook and if you see something good under comments write it down and god bless you all